Uh, but first, Carol. Yes, you're off to Lapland. <laughs> I went off to Lapland with again. children and everything. With children <laughs> and everything. And I tell you, it's my second year doing it, um, and it is it, it's such an absolutely amazing day, really. I know you all think I'm a cold-hearted old witch, <laughs> but I'm not really. And it, it's it, kind of something like witch, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <it's> something <laughs> like that. Um, but I'm not. You know, it's it's um, it's a charity called When You Wish Upon a Star, and they do it every year, and they get this a, a big plane and take all these poorly children over to Lapland to see. Santa and you know go on the sleighs and do the huskies and the skidoos and everything and you know eat sausages and have hot chocolate and all of that it's brilliant and last year I actually got to do like a little extra job because Santa asked me to be his helper right. so I was helping him give out <laughs> give out the presents to the little kids Big yourself I've ever seen I'm a very very large <laughs> elf but I did my job and I did it well so and remember, were, you, me. were you so good they asked you to be elf again this year well you know they did actually ask me to do it again this year but unfortunately Denise Welsh she got a little bit of elf envy. What? <laughs> she got elf envy and phoned her agent and she said, her agent had to have a word with Santa because Denise Welsh wanted to be the elf and she was the elf and here she is giving out the presents with, with Santa Claus. <laughs> got it? Oh. Where is she? Oh, she's not there. I don't know, what's that? Oh. We've got a little picture. Oh. <laughs> was turned, we'd get what a brilliant elf Carol was. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. This is what happened, right? Because once Carol was an elf on Anton Deck, she thinks she's got the monopoly on being an elf. <laughs> but I'd just like to say that Laura, who is the resident elf, has actually been on the phone to my agent and said Santa has checked my availability yes. for, next for next year. Not yes. me, because I was such a successful elf. And I've got me, got me elf and safety certificate. <laughs> <laughs> You were pretty good, I have to Why say. Why do you think you were a better elf than Carol? I just think it was, scary, it was the way perhaps. I handed over the presents to Santa. There was a certain technique, because me and Santa have got a bit of a vibe going on now. There you are. There you are. Look, giving a little, oh. little present to oh. Harvey. Little oh. Harvey there. Oh. Harvey, that little boy. Yeah. He had his... Um, three of his limbs amputated 18 months ago because of meningitis and he was just the most wasn't he the Adorable. bravest him and I were on the sledges and everything it was just the Smiling most the whole time. fantastic just, yeah. fantastic day <laughs> and uh, you know anyway you're, you. you're good elf what's this as well about you spontaneously bursting into so song not spontaneously combusting or anything <laughs> like that well, I did because we we went on the uh, the reindeer sleighs didn't we with a, with a couple of little kids I was with Max and you know I was feeling sort of really really jolly and Christmassy and I just started singing jingle bells jingle bells suddenly little Max goes jingle bells jingle bells really loud drowns me out and I'm oh. like this is great it's this just is the great. funniest thing oh. you've ever seen Carol in Lapland it, was, it just <laughs> is so funny but she had this reindeer and reindeers don't like us really that much and they've got these massive big antlers as you know and Carol kept doing hers to go faster so that oh, this massive it? antler thing kept coming and trying to poke me up the nose at the side of the <laughs> reindeer reindeer wars oh, no, she was so jealous when I got to be the elf it was untrue no, no, I think reindeer was jealous because your hat actually was had reindeer fur on it didn't it yeah well, we didn't realize that did no. we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway I think that's my cue to go oh, it's it's me. It's me. It's 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 lovely to see you She's the only person who can muscle in when it's not even her turn. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's just over a week until the big day, and dietitians have been explaining in today's mail uh, that it's psychological triggers that make us overeat at Christmas. Not our fault. Uh, seeing huge amounts of food in front of us sends metabolic signals of hunger to our brains, which leads to our stomachs expanding. Eating delights such as goose fat, roast turkey and Christmas pudding are all uber high in calories but low in fibre. Therefore, you need to eat a lot of them to feel full. As I say, it's not our fault. So, are you, are you worried about beating the Christmas fat trap? No, not at all. <laughs> Honestly, they want to spoil Christmas now. I mean, I love this thing about some of the chefs, you know, the celebrity chefs, put too much uh, fattening things in it, like the goose is fattening and ducks got fat. In the old days, you see, the reason you had fatty foods was because it kept you warm. 
city. So if you all turn your central heating down, it will save your gas bill and you'll be able to eat as much as you like. <laughs> That's <laughs> my theory. You do burn energy, yes. don't you? When you cold. burn energy. Yeah. Now, Mr Spain and I have a bit of a thing that we look forward to every year. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> well, is that because it's that too? <laughs> Only Santa comes but yeah. once a year. <laughs> Unless he's met Denise Welsh when he gets overexcited. <laughs> so, so, Mr Smith and I do love a bit of a mini mince pie. See, you know those little ones? I love those little ones. And I'm afraid you get the clotted cream and you sit it on top of the slightly warm mince pie so the cream starts to melt and then you pop it in your mouth. And that's a million calories a time. How many? I love it. How many? Hundreds, packets of them. Oh, I can't oh. tell you. Brilliant. Oh, it's only so once a year, though. So well, as I'm saying, exactly. why spoil it? And if you're going to cook the dinner, cook it properly or not at all. You know, what, you know what's the point? I think mince pies are revolting. Oh, when you I can honestly, I don't, I just don't, the idea of, they're full of, like, beef fat or something, aren't they? Suet, they've got suet in them. And currants. So just suet oh, pie. Just, I don't like the I'm idea of it. Any, yeah. But the other thing is, like, on Christmas Day, it's all so, it's just all so greedy, isn't it? You just don't need to eat that much food. You don't. You don't. Well, you, you do. do. You're just like loads of food. You do not. I mean, it's the time of year when day. you spoil yourself. When you go, do you know? I mean, I, I, I watch. It's about being a glutton. It's gluttony. No, it's one of not. The seven <laughs> sins. It's not. It's all gluttony. Year, all year round, I avoid that fat trap. I'm sorry, on Christmas Day, I'm jumping right in, I'm yep. wrapping the fat around and I'm <laughs> shoving it in. Yes, but that feeling that you have when you, you eat so much food that you actually can't stand up, you have to be horizontal. Do you know what you should do? That's yeah, just You should horrible. host Christmas Day, you should have it at your place, you should have everybody yeah. over, because when You'd you be do so that, busy. you don't actually sit down exactly. and get to eat much, do yeah. you? Well, you should be charging you be around. drinking? I don't well, what about the drink? <laughs> oh, well, you can't have Christmas Day without a little Bucks fizz at 9 o'clock in the morning, yeah. can you? Yeah. You can't. Actually, yeah. in our house, come 10 o'clock we've gone from the bucks fizz and the scrambled egg and smoked salmon and the toast and this sort of stuff um oh, my dad so oh it's lovely <laughs> my dad makes the best rum punch i mean for a scotsman <laughs> makes a really really good one and then we move on to whiskey sours by the evening it's great because you know i'm normally really dull all year round christmas day <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's arguing <laughs> Well, oh, one I'm day a year, to... I'm actually quite entertaining. Oh, <laughs> it was brilliant, because then it gets to the point... I don't do any cooking on Christmas Day. Steve does it all. Dad makes the, the rum punch. I actually don't notice what anything tastes like, how much fat so, is in it. So far, yeah. really? so far, all you've had to yeah. eat is breakfast. <laughs> That's all you've mentioned. Yeah. And well, then, then the rest is like the rum punch. Yes, and, and then Steve does the, the turkey or something. We just all go, cheers, <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and we have whiskey showers, it's fab. And I fall unconscious by 10 o'clock. Oh. You know. I like to get quite tipsy by about 11 so that you don't have to worry about the family politics and the fact that one year Paul dropped the, the turkey on the kitchen floor, kicked it, called it every name under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and our kitchen and our dining room was open plan so everybody saw everything and it was like, oh, quick, grab a drink. And that's what you need to do. You need to drink so much and then eat yeah. everything and then you'll be so drunk that yeah. you'll just be sick and then you can start oh, again. Oh, Carol! <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oh, tone. Yeah. I know, lunchtime. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay. Sorry. Don't 